gender equality for the simple reason that you know consulting employs so many many women uh, we even saw a data point that said that consulting is actually even crossed uh, or nearing the 50% mark um, with regard to zs which has again been an amazing a journey that we have had the opportunity to witness from where you were probably 3 4 years ago when you started on the list to you know the kind of uh, uh, impact with which you're holding on to your position uh, it's just brilliant and by the way every spot on the top 10 is just very 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 closely contested uh, there are you know companies that literally lose sleep over where they are going to be in the top 10 um, so my question to you neha is this when your organization nears that 50% magic mark, certain things can be taken for granted. You know, certain things which other companies, say some uh, a company which is in a tough diversity industry, like say manufacturing or logistics, where you have, you know, probably 10%, 20% women, there are certain things uh, which in a company like yours, where you're really, uh, you know, in the upwards of 30, 40% mark, women you have, are easily done. Can you just tell me what are still those aspects which you feel companies that are, uh, you know, that have probably solved what we call the diversity challenge, uh, you know, still have to focus on when it comes to achieving diversity, equity, and inclusion? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's uh, a pleasure, and the partnership with Aptal was for so many years, and really feels like family, and you're all so familiar. Uh, the the challenge still exists even though you know we could be uh, you know we could be in an industry which it's easier to hire women compared to manufacturing but even say, say for us we hire we do consulting work analytics work we need a lot of stem uh, you know women from stem colleges and if you look at the talent pipeline there itself is weak so every percentage point that we improve comes with a whole lot of hard work so I would say the challenges by industry differ. The challenge still exists, uh, especially, especially in India, because we don't have that kind of a talent pipeline coming in. Right? And there, um, we have to be very intentional about it. Now, uh, you know, traditionally, if we were to, let's say, we were only going to engineering colleges to hire, how can we encourage more women to apply? So, you know, for example, the ZS would do something like a ace of you know, where we would encourage more women to apply to us, we would talk about what it means for them. And also just opening up your mind to say, can this be done by a very different set of mm -hmm. qualification? So we actually opened up the entire analytics program to three-year graduate, to three-year graduation students, where we naturally find more women, uh, you know, students. So there are there are lots of mindsets to be broken, I think, right? I mean, in manufacturing, uh, I was looking at the case study where uh, they felt that women cannot operate a forklift, right? heavy equipment, we've not even tried uh, doing that. So why not just start somewhere? So I think there are, there are a lot of preconceived notions, biases, mindsets, and if you want to just broaden our perspective, there are lots of ways you will find, it just has to be, you have to make sure, once they are in, we don't make them feel any other way. Like we don't say, hey, you know what, you, you're probably not as technical, so you will not succeed. So not just open our mind to how we bring them in, but also create equitable programs to make sure they are able to train them, really make them succeed at work. Absolutely, absolutely. Neha, um, just for a minute, I, 